So, hello, thank you uh, for listening to our talk um, about what happens when supercomputing uh, you with MPI meets the common workflow language standards. So, who are we? Uh, so, my name is Rupert Nash. I work at EPCC in the University of Edinburgh. My colleague Nick Brown has also contributed to this work, as has Max Contact at the German Aerospace Centre. And joining me to present today is Michael. Hello, I'm at VU Amsterdam and with Elixir Netherlands. I'm also the project leader and one of the co-founders for the Common Workflow Language Standards Project. So what are we going to talk about? So uh, this is sort of an experience report talk. So we want to tell a bit of a story um, about how this work came about, the, the sort of 90% solution that we found that was missing a key feature. Spoiler alert, the solution was CWL and the thing it missed was MPI. Then I want to talk about the uh, the work we did together to produce uh, a solution that does work uh, at some of the unanticipated benefits that we got from this from the uh, HPC side of things and then talk about some of the limitations and thoughts about uh, how to take this forwards. Myself, Nick and Max have been working on the Visual Exploration and Sampling Toolkit for Extreme Computing project, which is funded by the European Commission. And we're seeking to fuse high performance computing and real time data for urgent decision making for disaster response. So things like wildfire, and that's what this example uh, workflow I'm showing here is for. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to run these workflows that include MPI parallelized applications. Uh, for doing simulations. And these need to be running on proper high performance computing, so tens to tens of thousands of cores sort of things. And uh, my colleague Gordon, who's credited with that image, is going to talk about this in one of the other uh, SC workshops on urgent HPC. We wanted to use uh, existing tools. We did have to have control over whether, where, and with what other parameters parts of the workflow need to run to deal with new data, user interaction, things like that. So uh, we did have to implement our custom workflow management system, but we didn't want to implement all the parts of this. Uh, in particular, we were sure that uh, tools must exist that could describe uh, a workflow steps inputs, actually do the execution, hopefully, of an MPI parallel program, describe the results uh, that this process generates, and to represent all of this in a structured, uh, computer manipulatable way. Really, what we wanted was a standardized way of doing this. And we found that CWL was actually a very close match to what we wanted. Why didn't uh, the common workflow language and its toolings uh, work with MPI? So to, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm going to briefly discuss what uh, MPI or the message passing interface is. This is probably one of the most important standards for high performance computing, uh, by which I mean large, tightly coupled simulations. Um, the basic way it works is that you start many copies of the same program across uh, one or more uh, servers, and they differ only by a unique index, which is called their rank. And MPI is a library that allows these programs to communicate by passing messages uh, in a point-to-point -point way or to do collective communications, do synchronization, do input and output and other sorts of things that you might need to do. Uh, and probably the most important thing on this slide uh, is the the final part here is that typically when you run an MPI program, you have to start it with a special launcher program uh, that deals with connecting between multiple nodes on your cluster. Uh, and this could be called something like MPI exec and the MPI standard specifically doesn't require that you start it in any particular way or at all, but if you do, it does recommend that you provide a program called MPI exec, which accepts as an argument the number of processes to start in parallel, your application and any arguments, command line arguments that it would normally need. So briefly, the common workflow language is a set of standards for describing command line tools and connecting these descriptions together to form workflows. So we're talking about batch automated data processing workflows. And one of the things we try to do with CWL is uh, for portability is disconnect things um, that we might write in a certain way on one particular system, but we should maybe be more explicit about what the goal was. So for example, let's say you, you wanna use or you have to use a Docker software container 
instead of baking Docker run my container into the command line, we model that as, hey, there's this Docker container available because the workflow engine might want to use the Singularity runtime engine uh, uh, or Docker or a different one, and we want to provide that flexibility. So since Rupert pointed out that MPI doesn't have this fixed form, we need to have MPI modeled in the same way. And today in the standards MPI, there's no way the MPI need, which is why Rupert came to us. So if we look at an example CWL description without any MPI, we see we've got this base command um, of called echo. We're just doing a little hello world thing here. And we've got this input message we want to put in the command line. And so we see that the description on the left and on the right, we see and here the, the CWL reference runner actually executing that. Uh, and imagine stuff to make it this do Docker or other things, but this is just that basic example. So yes, so now we want to talk about uh, sort of how uh, uh, we came to work together a little. So um, myself, uh, Nick and Max working on Vestec, uh, we were exploring using CWL for our purposes and uh, we discovered that CWL supports using JavaScript to compute values of some, some of the parts of the tool description. So I created a few functions that would programmatically insert the necessary MPI job launch commands to the front of the command line uh, C I was constructing. Um, so there's a little example on your right, and you might notice that this has got a bit more going on in it than the one Michael showed a few minutes, minutes ago. Uh, so this worked fine on my laptop, and it worked on one of the supercomputers that we're seeking to use, um, which is a Cray machine in Edinburgh. Uh, as a sort of neutral thing, this required using Node.js as a JavaScript execution engine, which is, you know, it's more software to build when you deploy these things. So that's not great. But probably uh, one big problem was that this uh, is a very rather ugly tool description. We've got a lot of extra stuff going in. We've got to import a load of things. And then this is probably the, the worst bit. Instead of actually using uh, echo as the base command in the tool description, I'm having to do this ugliness with setting the arguments and computing the thing by calling this JavaScript function here. Uh, and well, even worse than that, uh, it didn't work on any of the Slurm based clusters we were trying to use because uh, Slurm in its common setup requires that you set some environment variables and CWL does not support setting environment variables of names that have to be computed at runtime. And this totally failed to work with containers uh, as well. So uh, we sort of reached out to the CWL community and I started to work with Michael on this and it became clear that MPI has to be treated differently and it needs to be integrated into the job runner comparable to the software container functionality. So together we formulated these requirements, Michael. Working through this process, we realized which parts needed to be modeled in the tool description and which parts actually needed to be site-specific configuration. Um, and because we wanted, we're going to make this an extension to the CBIL uh, standard for now, but you know, ideally in the future will become part of CWL. So we determined, actually, we just need to tag the tool is MPI and how many processes we're going to pass to it. And basically everything else needed to be site specific. So let's look at that C to build uh, extension. So here we see uh, on the right, this is our language for describing the C to build standard itself. And so we're just going to add in this uh, MPI requirement, and it's going to have one field called processes, uh, which will be the number of MPI processes desired. If it's set to zero, then we've determined we're not going to use MPI with this tool. So there's actually some additional flexibility there. This was implemented in the CBIL reference runner by uh, Roop, uh, but we hide it behind this feature flag because it is an extension. Uh, so we encourage ex development of extensions, but we want people to know that they're dealing with something outside the standard. So let's see what that looks like now applied to our Hello World, Hello World example. So because it's extension, we have to do a little namespace thing, but really it's that MPI requirement and processes. We had an additional input 
so that in the workflow, we could control the number of MPI processes, but that could have been a fixed number as well. Um, so it's yeah, a, exactly. a more brief than what we had before. Yeah, and from a user point of view, uh, you just need to figure out how to choose the number of processes, which is a thing that you would have to be doing anyway if you're doing a parallel job. So the other thing that we had to do was to have a way to adapt to the various uh, um, idiosyncrasies of the HPC systems we're using. And we settled on adding a configuration file. Um, so we're, we're passing this configuration file into the runner behind a command line option. Uh, and it's just a simple YAML file that contains the sort of data you might expect. Uh, got the full uh, descriptions here. So things like the name of the command to use, uh, the flag that you're going to use to set the number of processes, uh, information about environment variables, and any extra flags that you might need to pass in. And we'll show an example of this in uh, a few slides. So uh, when you actually execute your tool, the runner checks for the MPI required. Michael just explained, evaluates the processes attribute. And if it's uh, present and not zero, it uses this configuration detail to actually construct an appropriate command line, which is uh, prepended to the tool's actual command line. Yeah, given where we are doing this talk, it's no surprise that this basically worked. Um, but we from the Vestec project had a few anticipated uh, bonus features test, of course, and they're integrated with CWL's reference runners um, test suite, and we use this within the Vestec workflow management system to wrap individual tasks. And now we could get this going on laptop, uh, on the Archer UK national supercomputer, or on a couple of Sloan-based clusters we've used. There was no need for uh, JavaScript. The tool descriptions much improved, and we managed to make it work uh, at least once using a container engine. And here's some pretty pictures to show uh, the outputs of a wildfire simulation. We also got this working with uh, sub workflows, uh, which is a feature of CWL where you can compose many steps together into a, a workflow and treat that one thing as your entire tool invocation. And this was quite useful for Vestec for the cases when we've got uh, a series of steps that uh, are always going to occur together. So for example, pre-processing some data, doing a large simulation and post-processing that to reduce the data down to just the results you need. And when we set up one of these uh, workflows, which show on the right here, uh, found that it just worked transparently. We had to do literally no further work here. And we could, for example, run this pre-processing step on single processes for various reasons. It had to be run on the back end nodes of uh, the supercomputers. And then we could run our parallel simulation uh, across uh, anything from a few dozen up to a few hundred processes and do the post processing in serial in the usual way. And this uses the same platform configuration for all of these MPI steps. Uh, another thing that was useful from our point of view is performance monitoring. So we have used the Liquid tool from Friedrich Alexander University in Germany uh, to uh, do this within the Vestec system because we were interested in monitoring the performance of our runs. and. We uh, use the MPI configuration file to basically uh, replace, add some extra arguments to our MPI run command to uh, have it track various things. So for example, on the right, this is using it to track the double precision floating point performance here and to output this. And this was on one of the clusters at uh, DLR, the German Aerospace Center. We validated that this was working by using the high performance conjugate gradient benchmark. Uh, which we picked because it reports on its own estimate the floating point performance. So we would be able to be confident that we'd got things working correctly. And I don't really want to dwell on this slide, but you can see that the HPCG reporting similar numbers to what we're measuring by using Liquid here. The two uh, numbers in the columns are very similar to each other. The fact that Liquid is slightly over reporting uh, with respect to HPCG is not surprising because HPCG gives an uh, its estimate based on a lower bound of the number of operations uh, that are required to do the operations. And the, one of the nice things is we can just uh, vary the flags in the configuration file to track different um, metrics, uh, which may be of interest to you. So uh, as we hinted at earlier, we did test once using Singularity. 
and different HPC sites you may be experimenting or are using software container approaches. So this is compatible with that, but probably some more work needs to be done on that in the future. Another issue if you're running uh, across multiple centers, uh, high performance computing centers is getting all your software compiled and because you can't use software containers, which are one of the, the nicer ways of encapsulating all these things in general on the, these systems, CWL supports this software requirements feature. So it's somewhat orthogonal to the classic workflow language approach that Michael was explaining uh, before, but basically you add in your tool description a hint, uh, which says, I require some software packages it's called Miso NH, which was the name of the weather simulation code that we were using and specify an optional version. And the reference runner has a feature which allows you to map these uh, identifiers to locally available packages because uh, not every center is going to install these with the exact same name and perhaps there might be more details uh, about exactly how it's being compiled. For example, on Archer, our Meso NH module uh, is loaded by uh, this command. It's module load Meso NH with no dash and a long complicated version string specifying exactly which compilers were used. So you, CWL lets us in, uh, encapsulate all of those things and have it work across multiple systems. Wrapping up here, uh, I'm just going to mention the issues that we know about uh, and ask uh, if the audience has any thoughts on this. So a few of the sort of known limitations. So we've given the common workflow language only a very simple model of what an MPI program is. It, it, it just knows that it has to be started in a special way with a given number of processes. But if you're using an HPC code, you often need to consider many more things. So for example, if you had a hybrid MPI open MP code, you might want to run one MPI process per NUMA region on your hardware and then fill up the rest of the cores on that NUMA region by setting uh, omp num threads to this. So the issue is that when you're writing your tool description, you don't know how many cores and NUMA regions your execution hardware is going to have. So the issue is how do you express this to the, uh, the runner in a fairly generic way. This is a difficult problem. And so for now, we are just setting these uh, via the platform configuration file. But the problem with that, from our point of view, is that that then applies across all tools run by that invocation. So if you had a workflow that had a pure MPI tool in it and then a hybrid MPI open MP one, you would have issues around setting the number of processes uh, correctly and any extra flags about um, memory affinities and so on. So we've just uh, deferred this to future work, um, but we do have a feeling that we could tackle this using the overrides feature of the reference runner. Uh, if anyone in the audience has suggestions, that would be uh, really nice uh, to hear. There are a few smaller issues that we want to, to look at. So uh, we want to be able to specify which version of the MPI standard your uh, tool requires. So the MPI forum is working towards version 4.0 at the moment. We want to be able to specify what level of thread support your application actually needs, because it can be anything from no thread support to full on multi-threaded MPI library available. We need to do some proper testing with software containers, um, as this is now becoming much more uh, uh, popular in the HPC world. And finally, we want to extend the CWProv uh, tool to capture more runtime information specifically about things like your module load invocations that you do as part of setting up the tool. To sum up, we've created a minimal extension to the CWL specification that lets you uh, specify it's an MPI tool and to set the number of processes to start. And we've implemented this in the reference runner uh, along with a mechanism for platform configuration. So from uh, our point of view in the best tech project, we're pretty happy because we found that CWL was a powerful and flexible tool that we could alter to support MPI and that the CWL developers uh, were very open and uh, help, helped us to make these alterations and then accepted them into the reference runner very promptly. We're also 
pleased to get the extra benefits around software requirements, uh, making our tool descriptions more portable, uh, the multi-step workflows that we could have, and the performance monitoring. From our perspective, we're really excited to see the, our work in the CWL standards uh, to be applicable to new communities and find somebody who wanting to extend and improve an existing solution. So uh, please go wheel shopping. And if the wheel isn't perfect, you know, see what you can do to make it fit all your needs. Um, we look forward to getting some version of the MPI requirement in a future version of the CWL standards. All that remains is to say thank you very much for your attention and acknowledge uh, funding from the Vestec project and the use of the Archer National Supercomputer Center. And we look forward to having questions and answers next. Thanks. Thank you.